What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Erica. We are down here um, to talk about... Oh, I need to put my earrings on. Let's see. There they are. We're here to talk about trending topics. Oh, bitch. <laughs> Why the first thing I open up um, Instagram and Hope Giselle posted a picture of Lil Boosie dressed like um, Lil Nas X in that pink cowboy outfit? Y'all. <laughs> Y'all better, y'all better leave this man alone. <laughs> y'all better leave that man alone. You know, his, something is wrong with him. Some ain't right. Some ain't right. I have a video coming out um, with him. You guys will probably see that in a second. So let's talk about the rest of the stuff that I have saved here. Actually, I wanted to go on the Jasmine brand to see um, what is going on with um, what's going on on there. Um I know that over the weekend, some people were upset because um, Tiffany, Amanda Seals' character in Insecure, is an AKA, and so she had on pink and green, and there were a few people, not many, but there were a few people who were like, she got on my shield, why she got on my shield, and it was like, they're actors, and even Amanda Seals was like, girl, I think reality TV got y'all fucked up, like for real, because that's an actress. She's not real. I don't understand. And I'm sure that they had to get that approved before they use it. I'm sure they have that much respect for the organization that they would actually call and get it approved before they you know, did that, I'm sure. And then I'm like, okay, so then why are you mad at Amanda Seals and not mad at the creators? It's just a way to be mad at her because a lot of people, you know, they take her in small doses. She's not, she's a cancer son. And I, and she, one day she was just talking, 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 talking. And I put in her comments, I said, are you, where is Virgo in your chart? Because you talk, 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 talk. She's a Virgo rising. Not a lot of people can take her. So it, it that was an opportunity for people to be upset with her when it was like, first of all, it's ridiculous because it's a fictional character. And second of all, she wouldn't be the person you would be mad at. You would actually be mad at the creators of the show or whoever directed the show at the time. And the costume designer even, I don't know. I thought that was very, very odd. Um... It says, as a Greek, this is George Johnson, shout out to George Johnson, um, as a Greek, any paraphernalia used on television shows is approved by our headquarters. Only folks to be mad is at our organization heads. It's like, it's just like a Sprite can being in a TV show. It has to be licensed. It's the same with the Greek orgs, letters, and symbols. This is a whole process of approval you go through. As a Greek, Oh, he said it again. Okay. And then because somebody said, okay, hold up. This girl is not a soror and had my shield on her body at Issa Rae at Secure Insecure HBO. And she spelled insecure wrong. Um, please do not do that again. That's wildly disrespectful. Girl, are you current? That's the real question. While you complaining about your letters and colors being on TV, are you current? <laughs> girl, are you up? You paid your dues, girl. <laughs> Here's what Amanda Seals. Here's what Amanda Seals had to say about it. Oh, hold on. You asking me if I'm a soror? I am not a soror. Tiffany is a soror. Tiffany is a character on a TV show. I didn't write the character. I play the character. I'm not a soror. I'm an actress, and I'm playing a character on a tv show and i think reality tv then really got folks fucked up because you know it's like it's all the same but it's it's not 
I'm just playing a character. <laughs> what to tell y'all? That's it. Y'all know that though. <laughs> but some of y'all don't. I feel like some folks really forget. Like, I, I don't know why people keep asking me if I'm a soror. I am not a soror. Y'all may have Googled it, and then this site, answers to all.com, answers to some, because you got these answers wrong this time, saying shit that ain't true. I am not a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. My school, SUNY Purchase, didn't even have a chapter. By the time I went to grad school, I, w- I was too involved in the me, find me of it all. But also, they do say here that I want a Pulitzer. So, I mean, I'm, I mean who knows? <laughs> that was a nice mistake. I mean, and I would I would be honored to be a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, but I simply am not. When I am Tiffany, I do wear the letters with pride and regard and respect for those who did cross the burning sands. Y'all may have Googled it, and then this site, answers to all.com, answers to some, because you got these answers wrong this time. <laughs> I, I don't know. Dude, that's funny. So I don't, it, it was anybody, any AKAs out there, were you, if you watched Insecure, are you, were you offended? Were you, uh, you know, I don't know. I think a lot of people have enough sense to understand that it does go through. And, and for me, I feel like somebody to say that, I feel like you don't really, do you understand how this works? You clearly don't understand how it works. Um, nobody is just going to wear anybody's letters and colors and all this other stuff and symbols on TV without approval. It just doesn't work like that. So um, hopefully the, that eases this woman's mind. She said, but y'all know that. <laughs> but y'all know that. Um, let's see. All right, here. It was another one that I wanted to talk about <sighs> Cynthia Bailey says marriage to Mike Hill played a factor in her decision in her decision to leave RHOA I want to do I want to do everything I can to protect it and him it says this is from the Jasmine brand it says former RHOA star Cynthia Bailey 51 is opening up about her departure from the show and how her marriage was a factor. In season 13 of RHOA, fans witnessed the reality star and sportscaster Mike Hill tie the knot after he popped the question in season 12. Confessing that her marriage played a role in the decision to leave RHOA, Cynthia Bailey said recently, after going through my divorce with my ex, I'm very protective of my second marriage because you know, I really want it to work. I want to do everything I can to protect it and to protect Mike, she continued. It's a little bit of a slippery slope sometimes, and it's not always a positive atmosphere to bring your family and husband into. Fair enough. Fair enough. She wants to protect her marriage. We say all the time, this is not a place to play with your marriage like Dewey and, and Jenny. Like We think that they're over there not telling the truth about you know, um, them wanting another child or him wanting another child. Right. But, um, if that's what she wants to do, if she feels like that's not the environment for her, um, I feel like the people on the show, I think with Portia being off the show, everyone who has a problem, I think everybody is cool except for Drew. That's probably why they kept Drew on the show. Because if you actually extract Portia from the show, she had a problem with Candy. She had an incident with Kenya. She had an issue with Cynthia. She had an issue with Marlo. Um, so removing her might relieve a lot of tension off of the show. They might, we might have a, 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 a cast or a season where there's not that much, um, unnecessary conflict Portia brought and it's no shade but Portia brought like this like anxious energy into the space it was always like like here comes this girl like it was like I don't know she would come in like jovial but it seemed like it was like there was an attitude like following her like I'm jovial but bitch start something we can get this shit cracking you know they they showed the other um the trailer for her upcoming special which is weird because I thought it was supposed to be a special about her activism and it seems to be a special about her family taking a trip like a la Candy's family taking trips and stuff like that and I saw the trailer and towards the end of the trailer Portia is fighting so 
who is it now? Who is she going to blame it on now? Right? Because she's easily provoked, right? A little, a little bell rings and she, she jumps. Yeah, they did show that trailer. They announced the new cast of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, where is that? They announced it yesterday. Um, it was, uh, Kenya, Candy, who was, that's so much shit on here. Kenya, Candy, Drew, um, who else? Um, Kenya, Candy, Drew, here, let me go. I know where to go to get the, to get the tea. Let's go to All True Tea. Shout out to All True Tea. Um, here we are. I knew she would have it. Can, um, Candy, Kenya, Sheree, Drew, uh, Drew, Marlo, and this new woman. I don't know who she is. Um, I think she's like an Olympian, right? Um, yeah, I think with Portia off of the show, it really is going to ease a lot of the tensions, like the underlying tensions and the old issues that, that she has with everybody. And it kind of brings a, like, it does kind of bring tension. If you if really like, go watch, go watch when Portia is in a scene, it's always like some shit is happening. It's, it's a lot of, it. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Am I being biased? Right. Because you know, I don't with Portia, but y'all let me know what y'all think, um, about the new cast of RHOA. Um, are you excited for the new season? I think the only one that we can have problems with is, you know, the new girl coming in and trying to, you know, harmonize her, her energy with the girls. And then, um, Drew, Drew is of course, probably going to have a problem with Kenya. Um, we'll see how that works out now that we have removed a variable, um, in that equation It might, you know, removing Portia might have, it might create a different atmosphere between Drew and Kenya. We don't know because, you know, Kenya is very like, I'll work with you, you know, like, okay, well, I'll give you a chance. Like she's that type of person, right? We've seen her do it. So, um, we'll see. And then Marlo. And we're just going to see, and then, and then Sheree, hopefully Sheree doesn't come in on that same energy that she has been like that, that, that energy that you want to be proud to be a, a bone carrier. You want to be proud to start shit. It's weird. Sheree is weird. I just, I, I don't think, I think Sheree is actually really whack to me. I think she's tired and through, I think she is just tired. I don't know what she's late. That's what I feel like she's late. I feel like she's the only, hopefully, because this is like the third chance she's getting. And hopefully when she comes back, she does something with her platform. Because even LaToya, she was on Real Housewives for one year, came out with an athlete, a athleisure line. Isn't that what, what's her name was coming out with five, six, seven years ago? Still haven't come out. It's just pictures on the website. I think somebody says something about joggers. I don't, I, I don't know. I think somebody said that she has something coming out. I'm not sure, but hopefully this season, Sheree can use her platform and like expand her brand because she has, she by Sheree is like a dope name for a company. I mean, you know, I call her she by broke because I'm like, girl, what's tea? When are you going to do something with every single woman? Like almost every single one. Ashley is another one. You haven't done nothing with your platform at all, at all. Ashley is another one. So we'll see. We'll see how the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta go. Um, shout out to Megan the Stallion. That's my girl. She's graduating college. She's about to graduate. She's taking her graduation pictures yesterday. So proud of her. You know, my that's my girl, Megan Stallion. is my girl, honey. I'm so proud of the girl. She's real hot girl shit. Yes. So we're proud of, we're proud of Megan the Stallion. She did all of that. And I was thinking about her when I was in the bathroom. I was thinking like, this girl done got shot. She done been ridiculed, dragged through the streets. Did not stop going to school. Did not stop to go get her degree. I'm proud of her. I am so proud of her. It's just the, it's just the tenacity for me. Okay. Um, oh, Kenya didn't make it, but just means greater things are coming. This is what, this is from All True Tea. 
Um, her and her partner got eliminated. Um, I guess last night, that outfit is really cute. Spider webs. It's really cute. That sucks. She looks, she doesn't look pleased. She looks so sad. But I really think they want JoJo Siwa to win. That's what I said last night on Twitter. I really think that they want her to win. And someone said, yeah, because it will just complete her hero arc of coming out. Like she came out to the people and now she wins Dancing with the Stars and she gets this obnoxious globe or whatever. So um, yeah, sorry for Kenya, but I know that was something that she really wanted to win, but she did great. She did really great. Um, all the dances that I saw, she did. She did great. Um, let's see what else from, I can, we can talk about from all true tea. <laughs> so Jenny responds to the niece. Um, remember, the, um, Jenny from uh, Salt Lake city, her, some Asian girl came out and said that she was her niece and that she, um, was like always like kind of like, um, living off her family and this and that. And somebody asked Jenny, what what's the story behind your niece calling you out and she says to be honest i don't know i haven't talked or seen or seen them for over nine years she wasn't even born when i was in college struggling <laughs> that's hilarious this is this remember this girl and you know what for me i'm gonna tell you exactly what i was thinking i was thinking this is a random asian girl on the internet running for clout and people are going to believe her because she's Asian. I was like, who is this random Asian girl? I need to see some pictures of Jenny and the girl. I need to see some family photos. I'm not going to believe just this random Asian girl on the internet and say, oh, I'm Jenny's niece and y'all believe it because she's Asian. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not playing that game with y'all. I'm not going to do that with y'all at all. At all, honey. All right, let's see what else we have on our list. Um, Okay, hold on. Hands on my knees, hands on my knees, hands on my knees, hands on my knees. Um, Vanessa Bryant testifies how she learned of Kobe and Gigi's death. She tried to take a helicopter to the crash site the same day. Oh, wow, this is sad. Um, Vanessa Bryant revealed in a deposition how she learned about the tragic death of Kobe Bryant and their daughter Gigi. This is from the Neighborhood Talk. Um, Vanessa says she tried to take a helicopter to the crash site that day and was told the weather conditions were too bad. According to USA Today, in a transcript, Vanessa says she kept the clothes that Kobe and Gigi were wearing that day out of concern that someone would take pictures for um, of them. So Vanessa is pissed that several officers, because they took photos of the site and shared images. She's suing the county for invasion of privacy and negligence. She wants to punish the deputy defendants and make an example of them to the community. Under questioning, Vanessa testified how she learned of the crash. She said a family assistant knocked on the door around 1130 that day, almost two hours after the crash happened, about 945. She told me there was an accident and there were five survivors, Vanessa testified. And I asked her if Gianna and Kobe were okay. And she said she wasn't sure. She didn't know. I'm getting emotional. Okay. <clears throat> in her deposition, Vanessa said she pleaded with the Los Angeles County Sheriff to make sure no one took photographs of, of the crash site. Ooh, girl, keep it together. And I said, if you can't bring my husband and baby back, please make sure no one takes pictures of them. Please secure the area. And he said, I will. And I said, no, I need you to take out, get on the phone right now. And I need you to make sure you secure the area. She said the impact of the helicopter crash was so damaging. I don't understand how someone can have no regard for life and compassion and instead chose to take the opportunity to photograph lifeless and helpless individuals for their own sick amusement. Uh, everything, everything she said, the person who took pictures, you're sick. Like there's, there's, I don't give a damn who it was. I don't care if it was, I don't care. You don't take pictures of, I just, I just, I remember like one of the first times somebody's image, their, their, their body was posted on the internet. It was Messy Maya from New Orleans. I remember it like it was yesterday. I, 
I could not believe his picture was posted on the end. That was the first time I saw somebody like really have no regard for a person and post them to the internet. It was, it's, it's, I don't understand what goes through a person's mind. Like, Ooh, I got to get this. I don't know. I don't get what I'm, I'm with her. Like you need to be made a, an example out of, let me know what y'all think about it. I'm with her. I'm with her a hundred percent. It's disgusting. You need to be made an example out of. We needed to make an example out of you. Out of you. Um, Let's see. What else we got? Okay, y'all, let's see. I think that's it. Hold on, hold on. Hands on my knees. 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 Let's look at. Baller Alert, don't be. Ha- they have like stuff, but like stuff that's going on outside of. Dave Chappelle, let me just say this. Okay, he had something else come out on his page yesterday talking about, you know, um, you, I will talk to the LGBTQ community. He says LBGTQ. He says it wrong and he's, I, I, he's saying it wrong intentionally. He's getting the letters out of order intentionally. What he's not, that's not a mistake. He's not getting that, he's not getting the letters out of order on accident. It's very intentional. But he sits on the stage and he says, I will not bend to your demands. Uh, You will not summon me. I will do this and I will do that. And it's just, for me, I think what Dave Chappelle is, what's happening with him is that he's, he can't believe that people are that mad at him. He can't believe that. And he's overthinking it and he's overthinking it. And Right now, he's in a space where he wants to be right about what he's saying. And luckily, and we know by watching his stand-ups, that he self-reflects. And hopefully, he said, because he said the closer was the last time he was going to talk about it. And he came out with something else. Like I said, Dave Chappelle and I share the same birthday. He's overthinking it. He's upset that people are upset with him. And he believes that he is right. But what's going to happen, he is going to sit down and think, he's thinking about it right now as we talk about this. He's going to be thinking about it and he's going to make another statement. And he is going to have, hopefully, we can hope. Because I feel like with self-reflection comes self-correction. And with self-correction, you could say, hey, you know what? This wasn't the right approach, right? And I believe that if you are really like Dave Chappelle is one of my favorite comedians, Seinfeld is another. I believe if you are really a good comedian, you can navigate with the skill set that you have and you can make jokes about every group of people. But you have to do it in a skillful way. And if you are skillful in your craft, you can do it where other people in those communities can kind of chuckle and laugh and kind of relate to it and not be like, oh, Dave, damn, why would you say that? Like, don't say that, you know, but, you know, for comedy, I've always said comedy is supposed to highlight the tragedies of our society and try to make light of them. And I think what happens is when a comedian says something, so the comedian is the observer of the world, right? And what they do is take all the bullshit of the world and try to make jokes out of that. All the things that that make us like, oh, we shouldn't do this, things that are uncomfortable to talk about. That is what comedians are supposed to do. That was one reason why I didn't like D.L. Hughley, because I felt like his his comedy was very mean spirited. His comedy was more of a roasting. And I don't really like roasters. I like more, more like intellectual and then like common sense comedians like Jerry Seinfeld. He literally says he talks about the, the most random shit silverware. He talks about like crazy and it's funny because it's relatable and it's like, oh my God, I never thought about that. That's why I love Seinfeld. I think he's so smart. Um, Dave Chappelle, I feel like he's the same way, but this particular topic, he's not navigating it right. And I think it's fucking with him. 
And I think it's fucking with him because, and that's when I said the other day, like being canceled, it's like, he, he yells to the audience, am I canceled? Am I canceled? And it's like, no, you're not canceled, but you know, you're not canceled. But he said that he has a documentary coming out and people have been saying, no, sir. They, they accepted the documentary to show him at festivals. And now they're telling him, no, thank you. I think part of that canceling is, is, um, cutting off the, um, money. That's when the, like the, the money is getting cut off. Now you're affecting my money. So that's, that, that would be an effective way to cancel someone. It's like, when you start messing with their money, that's what, that's what it is. Saying like, I don't care. I'm not going to subscribe to you. I don't have to worry about you. But when it starts affecting the pockets, I don't believe in cancel culture. I believe it's really about accountability and holding you accountable. And a lot of people don't want to be held accountable. A lot of people want to be able to say what they want, especially comedians, because comedians feel like my job is to make jokes about the bullshit of, of this world, about the, 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 the darkness of the world. We're supposed, the comedian is supposed to bring light. You know what I'm saying? And right now he's not, he's just not navigating that space correctly and he's overthinking it. And hopefully he self-reflects and then he self-corrects and then he comes out and has a different perspective and tells jokes with a little bit more responsibility. That's all I can say about it. Anyways, take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.